Hello, everyone. This is Shams from Paradox here. Uh, you're about to listen to the Paradox podcast with an episode about leaks in the industry. But one day after this episode was recorded, something funny happened that we think adds a little bit of context to the episode. Daniel, would you like to lay it out for our listeners? Yes. So uh, yesterday we announced a release date and open pre-orders for Crusader Kings 3 are upcoming. And may I say very, very cool looking grand strategy game. CK3 will be releasing on September 1st this year, which we obviously made a huge deal out of uh, yesterday. But the day before, so just the day after we finished recording a podcast on the topic of leaks, the release date and our announcement assets leaked. <laughs> <laughs> So the reason for this was pretty much the uh, standard one. Uh, a storefront at one of our distribution partners uh, went live a bit early. Either someone on their end pushed a button a bit too early or someone on our end put, pushed a button a bit too early. We don't really know. But what, what this meant was that our, our announcement assets and our uh, the news, as it were, uh, leaked. And this obviously quickly caused a bit of conversation on social media, on Reddit, and on the uh, Paradox forums. Now, our original announcement for launch date, uh, and this is always the case, was very carefully planned to coincide with uh, a Paradox publisher weekend on Steam, uh, a great media campaign to support it with preview articles and a kick ass trailer, all sort of going live at the same time to really boost this announcement. Perfectly planned, it sounds like. Exactly. Best laid plans, right? As yeah. you can imagine, this spoiled a little bit of the fun, but also, as you'll hear on the podcast, it's not really the end of the world. Yeah. So that's it, everyone. Enjoy the episode. Enjoy the episode. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Paradox Podcast, the podcast about the business of video games, where we try to shed a bit of light on the inner workings of our lovely industry from a business perspective. It's hosted by me, Daniel Goldberg. I'm in charge of marketing at Paradox Interactive and uh, Shamster Johnny, my dear friend, who's not to my right as he usually is because we're recording this from home, but I can see his face on my screen. Shams is in charge of business development at Paradox Interactive. Say good morning, Shams. Good morning, everyone. Good stuff. We're also today being joined by a special guest, Jonathan Whitley, Influencer Relations Manager at Paradox Interactive. We're gonna bring Jonathan into the conversation a bit later. Um, and the reason Jonathan is here is because of the topic at hand, which is leaks, leaks in the video games industry. Right. Last, last week, we talked a lot about uh, COVID's impact, and we actually got a big outpouring of uh, comments and, uh, uh, and feedback. So we really just want to say thanks and keep the, doing that. Uh, but I think this episode is going to be about something far less serious or more serious depending on who you talk to well you've got the marketing guy on the recording this is this is as serious as it, as it gets shams yeah, there you go <laughs> leaks in the video games industry that's the topic at hand um i mean you know every once in a while you see a post on reddit or a news website that something secret has leaked has become public knowledge uh the last of us 2 had a major leak the other week and it obviously made uh huge waves in the industry did you did you check out any of the spoilers yet shams for the last no. of us 2? I, I've I've been so careful staying away from spoilers. I haven't even played the first game. That's yeah. how good I am at this. Well, you haven't played the first game. No. Holy shit! It's it's one of those games that it feels like everyone has played The Last of Us. Well, so you say. <laughs> Are you? Is it not? Uh, is it not? Uh, not the kind of game that you enjoy, or what's the what's the reason? I don't know. Like it's. I was too late. It's it's what it is, right? I was too late yeah. to to play it, and now it's. I kind of feel like I can't start watching Lost now, right? It's, it's the kind of... Well, <laughs> I actually spoiled everything. I read all the spoilers for The Last of Us 2. Wow. I can't help myself. You're terrible. Whenever whenever there's stuff like that that I see, I just call, I click it immediately and I just kind of yeah. wallow in the spoilers yeah. of it. Like, uh, I get, you know, I enjoy the, the dirtiness of it. Uh, so I, I, I've i spoiled it all for myself. Do you take a shower it, though, afterwards? But... Like, what's the, what's the setup? <laughs> yeah, a long, a long cold shower afterwards. Cold shower. That's right. So will we be leaking anything ourselves this episode? Is Can we make sure that that happens? Can we put a leak somewhere in this episode? Well, we'll, we'll try. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if we can. We'll see if we can get something subtle in there at some point. But anyway, we thought this would be a a, a, a good uh, a good topic to 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 dissect. So let's let's dive right into it. Leaks in the video games industry. 
Right, so leaks, they come in all sizes, shapes and forms, but let's start from the beginning. Why do leaks happen at all? I mean, it seems to me that this is a bigger problem for our industry than the movie industry, maybe, or am I wrong here? Uh, I'd say you're probably right. I mean, there are, of course, uh, secrets in uh, in Hollywood and they, they leak too. But I would say as an industry, they I wouldn't necessarily say they're more open by choice, but but there's 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 uh, there's more openness as to what is in production and what is happening. Um, I think there's several reasons for that. One is probably that there that there at least my perspective is that there tends to be many more differently, many more sort of different independent parties uh, involved in in some kind of TV or movie production, and each of those obviously have their own agendas, whether it's the you know, it's it's an agent for someone, or it's a script writer, or it's it's the it's the production company. So so keeping things secret becomes very very hard when there's many many parties involved, and not everyone might be very interested in keeping stuff secret. I also think that there's there's something that is maybe not unique to gaming, but but quite but but much more pronounced in gaming than in other other forms of entertainment. And it's kind of the very sort of highly ritualized nature of games marketing where you have a you know there's a highly highly engaged audience typically that engages very strongly with the the sort of you know the common announce release hype cycle of yeah. a new video game a lot of that stuff is obviously theatrics but it's something that the the industry has really taken to and really helped cultivate the sort of culture around and lots of rituals around you know you've got the you know you, all the all the big stuff from the first parties is typically announced at E3 and then you know there's there's a, there's a ritualized nature to it there's a cadence to it yeah yeah and so just keeping that going uh is 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 valuable because it elicits a certain response in the audience and it gets you that hype that you want yeah. right uh, i think hollywood obviously has its own different rituals in many ways it works the same but it's not as the theatrics aren't as pronounced as they are in the in the games yeah, yeah. can i ask um yeah, i think please. i think yeah sorry go on does, does, no, ask your question does, does it does it also perhaps matter less i don't know if, if because at the end of the day like if there's a new star wars coming out or a bond movie i mean the important thing is that you're going to watch the movie it's a two-hour investment at the end of the day like you know what makes our industry different yes I think I think expectations management is important here. I think uh, sort of the thing the thing to remember is that you know a lot of this is uh, a lot of the reasons why why especially from a marketing perspective keeping very tight control over what information is released at what point is about expectations mm -hmm. management, right? A half you know a half finished gameplay clip or even a screenshot that portrays a game that is in development in you know less than a flattering light or even in a way that is hard to understand out of context can really help change or even set a certain narrative around a game. And that's something that can be really, really hard to come back from. And I'm not sure, I've been thinking about this, and I'm not sure the same thinking is really applicable on movies, because obviously a, a, a half-finished uh, uh, recording from a, you know, from, 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 a, from a movie set is so obviously not finished, yeah. right? Whereas in gaming, it might be less obvious. So I think it's 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 <laughs> that speaks volumes about the quality of games, to be honest. Uh, yeah, but it's also you know it's say the green screen stuff and what have you. And gaming might of not course. be as there's more tweaking involved in it. So so it's, I I think from that from that sense there's um, it's kind of less it's kind of less potentially damaging. Um, yeah. But 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 yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, uh, mainly I'd say there are sort of fewer parties involved. Uh, mm. Many times, everyone involved in, in in producing a game actually works for the same company. Uh, and then, obviously, coming back to what I talked about, the sort of the the, the high engagement and the the sort of the the, the ritualized uh, theatrics of games marketing. Uh, there's a lot, obviously, always a lot of discussion and speculation active in social media on, on sort of ongoing projects. So any kind of yeah. little bits of information that leak become dissected and interpreted in ways that can be really hard to predict. I think the interesting part here is uh, if you follow the news about Assassin's Creed Valhalla, that they mm. have now 15 teams working on it. And the question if, is if, if we're getting to the point where some of the AAA games productions are becoming more similar to the Hollywood industry, where so many different parties are involved, maybe leaks will happen more rather than it just being one studio making it. But could also factor be that most of the major game companies are public. Is there an, an, a natural need for more secrecy and thus more leaks in a way? 
I think being a this is something that we wrestle with quite a bit actually. Being a public company puts this depends obviously on what what country you're from, but it typically puts certain requirements on you as to what information you release to the public at at, at what point. Yeah. Um. There's you know there's very strict market regulations in place about if we enter into a business agreement with a third party and arguably uh, signing a deal to produce a certain game could be could be could be big enough to warrant that it's 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 information that we need to make public yeah uh, and i think i think this is something that you see reflected in hollywood as well when typically you know a new series being in production on a major ip is something that might be actually it might actually be announced in a very sort of unceremonious way as part of a quarterly earnings report for example and and i think so so uh, it, you're right but maybe not in the way that you might that you might think <laughs> being, like being a public yeah. <laughs> being a public company it, it forces you to be transparent with information in certain ways that might not be beneficial to you from a marketing perspective so so yes but i also i also i think we need to be open with the fact there's probably a lot of confirmation bias in here i mean both you and me work in games uh we don't really know if our industry has more or less leaks than than, than other industries it just they just make a bigger impact for us right because we care about them for the for the narrative of this podcast let's assume it does. <laughs> let's assume it does yeah so so let's let's dive into it then briefly. What 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 form uh, do leaks take? I mean, you have the sort of classic uh, ratings board actually, uh, you know, accidentally revealing the existence of a game. Someone checks someone's LinkedIn page where they've updated their current uh, work. Um, you know, retailers uh, where they break out promotional materials ahead of time, where they start pre-orders ahead of time. You've got Amazon listings. I mean, sometimes there's obviously sloppiness on our part. One thing that we've done quite a few times is you know. When we live stream something, uh, the person in the in the studio has accidentally revealed their Steam library, Whoops. and uh, that's that's why we now use uh, project names for everything. So yeah. even if someone sees, you know, even if it, uh, our lovely Jimmy who's in the who's in the studio with us recording this podcast, even if someone accidentally sees his libra Steam library on Steam, all they can see is like Project Fraser. They won't actually see that it says Bloodlines Two. Yeah, of course. Now that's um, good. so that's. But 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 yeah, again, this comes back to what you mentioned. You know, the more parties involved, the more this happens. Yeah. Best Buy doesn't really care that much. Amazon might not really care that much. But for the studio whose whose game is is accidentally revealed, it might be might be a big deal, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, then of course we also have the more dramatic uh, leaks where we have you know a disgruntled employee employee who either just steals or hacks something, or it might just not even be a disgruntled employee. It might be a gruntled employee, as we also call them. Uh, we... <laughs> Disgruntled. It's such a lovely word, yeah. isn't it? Uh, but a lot of times people are just motivated by wanting to you know, see the world burn, just like you and your mm. spoilers, right? Uh, mm. uh, or they just want to hurt the company or have a, you know, something, uh, an agenda. Uh, but most of the time, you know, <laughs> there have been examples of images, you know, internal screenshots, internal documents, grainy photos, and even full def uh, videos. And, you know, even historically, in the case of, you know, Half-Life 2 had entire builds of a game, a highly anticipated game uh, leak. Mm. Um, there is a user on Reddit called Timmy8, Triple M, Mm -hmm. who's chronicled a few leaks and a, and a couple of magnificent threads. So if you're at least interested in this, check that out. Um, but for to hear some more war stories, I sat down with Julian Vera. He's our chief product officer, and he served a number of tours of duty on some of the biggest and coolest publishers in the world, Ubisoft and uh, EA. So let's, uh, let's just listen to um, Julian as he talks about some of the war stories. Right, so Julian, you have a sordid history at Ubisoft and EA. Surely, you have a couple of juicy stories about leaks. Yeah, there's uh, there, there's a lot of stories because I think statistically, if you look at all the games out there, particularly in AAA, everything leaks at some point or other. Um, and uh, but all leaks are different. <laughs> you know, there's different reasons in different ways. And there's some some cases are interesting to look at. They're fairly, you know, well publicly documented. Uh, a project I, I didn't work on, but that happened during my time at uh, at UB was uh, Rainbow Six uh, Patriots, that was being developed out of uh, Montreal, I believe. And and I think um, what happened is that a, a, a disgruntled employee uh, left the company, and uh, he left with a video which he sent uh, to. Uh, media, which I believe was Kotaku, 
uh, which was something like 10 minutes of gameplay of oh, yeah. a game that hasn't been, hadn't been announced. So what Kotaku did at that time is uh, they did the right thing. They they reached out to uh, to the studio and said, "Hey, we have this. Uh, do you want to talk, or should we just publish it out of the blue uh, in a week?" And so um, so that was you know really well handled by the studio. At the end of the day, they they just uh, they just owned it and uh, they 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 used that gameplay and they did a kind of game director commentary uh so they, they kind of owned it so that the, you know unfortunately that was you know there's a reason why we uh we don't announce game too early so that particular game that leaked ended up being canceled and then uh, replaced by the now very successful uh, rainbow six siege uh, a few years after um but i mean talking about leaks so it's one of the there's some leaks that don't damage a game uh or company at all i'm thinking you know you know assassin's creed valhalla leaked for years before and it's assassin's creed and vikings and it sounds absolutely awesome and then they announced it and it's exactly assassin's creed with vikings and it's everything you want it to be so so it's fine everybody was excited for that um when um when we uh when i worked on battlefield one it was a very interesting case because you know you don't get a second chance to do a good first impression and what we knew is that if you just sit, tell people it's Battlefield and World War One, they're going to have a, a vision of something very slow. They're going to have a vision of something very horrific, uh, you know, endless trench wars, etc. And and of course, you know, now that the game is out, and you can see that uh, what we wanted, to, what we were building, was a fairly different vision: a vision of adventure, a vision of you know exploration, etc. And so. So there was a lot of paranoia around that game leaking ahead of its time. And to the point that we, we actually spent in the studio endless amounts of time watermarking any document, any video that left the studio, even for you know to be sent out to other of our colleagues at EA was watermarked with their name on it and you know encrypted password protected watermarked with their name on it, all the way to uh, to our CEO. I remember receiving a request from a, for a gameplay video from our CEO, Andrew Wilson. And then I said, well, you know, we're going to have to send a video with a big watermark across the screen that says confidential Andrew Wilson. And then they were like, but he's the CEO. And like, I was like, no, no exception, you know? You know, he asked us to be really strict on security, so he's going to understand. Did you um, hear back on that? Was he? No, no, I, I did not. I think, you know, that's the, the, uh, the, the greatness of being a... Uh, being remote or communicating a lot by email is I, I couldn't uh, I, I couldn't see, but I could imagine you know my my colleagues on the other side of the world rolling their eyes at this paranoid marketing director. Uh, and so, but one thing that was interesting is that the, the game before the announcement, the game actually leaked multiple times. Um, you know, some people got a hold of some you know very small parts of information, etc. What was really interesting for us to see is that. They posted them on, you know, Reddit and the other usual channels, and then nobody believed them, because to uh, to uh, to the rest of the world and to most of the the gaming community, EA, you know, this you know big blockbuster American publisher doing a game taking place in World War One was just completely outlandish, and so you could you could see like people posting accurate information. But they were just like being downvoted or like you know okay. laughed at, et cetera, which so, which kept the game under wrap quite uh, quite well. Yeah. So the strategy is either watermark everything with a CEO's name, or just make sure your concept is so outlandish nobody will believe a leak. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a bit of that, and uh, so th that that kind of saved us and towards the end because these these AAA announcements are like this ginormous machine that are very well choreographed. So. The announcement was meant so that the the moment, the minute we announce, GameStop stores all around the world were actually coming out with like physical promotional stuff in stores, and and of course you know these things you have to send in advance to all the stores, and of course they just opened them up and and uh, posted them online. But that leaked, and and then you know there's the name of the game, there's art, there's promotional offers, uh, but that that just happened on the day of the announcement, and then it was just like this is uh, this is fine. So that was a uh, that that was an interesting. I, I will never know whether the the paranoia we had and the watermarking actually helped or hurt our process and the way we worked. Uh, 
I just know that we did it, uh, and it was uh, not fun at all. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, there, there's uh, there's a lot of that, and us and, as an industry, I think because we're you know we're making games, we're not you know working in on nuclear warheads or something. Um, we're not very good at keeping secrets because also we're all passionate and we're all excited and everybody kind of, you know, just really excited to share what they work on. So, you know, leaks happen in particular, they, they happen and they go out in the wild when players are excited by it. So very often if something leaks and people are talking about it, it's, uh, it's an indicator that players are actually really excited to see what's coming next. Okay, so that was uh, Julian Vera, Chief Product Officer at Paradox, possibly the most hardworking man For in the sure. games industry. <laughs> Julian is a very busy man, I can tell you that. Uh, I mean, fascinating stuff, right? Let's let's discuss some of the things that uh, Julian mentioned. First of all, let's let's maybe start with you know the actual impact of of leaks inside the uh, the sausage factory, as it were, as well as as how how one can mitigate them. Uh, let's let's bring Jonathan into the conversation. Jonathan Whitley, our our lovely influencer relations manager. Welcome to the podcast, Jonathan. Cool. Thanks, Daniel. Good to be here. Welcome aboard. Good to have you. First of all, let's just say that Jonathan hasn't got one of the fancy microphones that me and me and Shams have been supplied with. So we apologize in advance if the if the audio quality isn't 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 outstanding, right? But we think it's going to be good enough anyway. Good. Uh, acoustics aside, Jonathan, let's let's delve into the PDX side of things, uh, and um, we need your perspective here. I'll, I'm going to start off by asking the big question, because I'm not in marketing. So, how big of a problem is this really? Are leaks really a problem? Is it like for whom is it a problem? Is it just the marketing teams? I mean, from my perspective, and I've, perspective, and I want to echo what Julianne said is that the big secret in our industry is that there are no real secrets. We're really bad at keeping secret secrets. Everyone can more or less find out what everyone else is working on. You just ask. Um, and you know we're very transparent. We all know that there's a GTA 6 coming out. Every successful game gets a sequel. You know who's making it. You know They're very seldomly big secrets. So is this a real problem or is just more your KPIs that are in, in, in jeopardy here? <laughs> well, it's probably a, a problem for some departments where other departments might be a little more lenient on it. Uh, Julian brought up one example of a leak that is actually a serious problem, and that's when you're you when you're revealing some storyline elements, something that would just spoil the content of a game. Uh, any kind of RPG is going to definitely suffer from that kind of leak. But then you've got the other side of these leaks where uh, it's more of a marketing beat. It's an announcement. Maybe a store goes live a little early with something. or uh, And these were situations where we had been trying to surprise the community. We wanted to stack up you know, news and PR and uh, some influencers even because we're trying to break above the noise of the internet. So, yeah, I mean, it kind of sucks when your well-played lands all get disrupted. But... In the end, for the marketing side of things, which is less serious in my opinion, usually turns out to be all right. You just kind of roll with the punches and sometimes turns out even better. Maybe that's why a lot of people on Reddit think that we actually orchestrated or masterminded these leaks. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think Jonathan is right. I think it's uh, it's important to uh, um, remember, I mean, there's two things, right? First of all, and Julian touched upon this as well, if something leaks and people get excited about it, that's actually good, right? That's that's showing you that you're getting the reaction that you want. So the, you know, that, that all important awareness is getting to you, even though it might not be happening in the way you expected. But I think Jonathan touches upon something important as well that we've touched upon in this podcast in the past. There's kind of, a, you know, looking in from the outside, it's easy to have the impression that, you know, if if a product exists, that that you know, if if a certain product exists, everyone who might be interested in that product is kind of automatically made aware of its existence, and that is not the case. So, <laughs> building awareness and just making sure that you know the existence of this game that you're making reaches everyone who you who, who is your target audience takes a lot of work and costs a lot of money. And you know, the there's a, there's a, there's news as in being able to release new information is a very important and very powerful tool in that. So 
you know, Jonathan mentioned stacking marketing beats, and that's that's really important, and that's really what this is about. Like, it's important to us to be able to release news at certain points in time because that way we get the attention of the press, we get the attentions of the influencers we might want to work with, and that's very much what Jonathan spends his time at at Paradox doing. So it, it's kind of it, it 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 stuff leaking means that we have less power and less ammunition to actually build awareness for something, right? But yeah, let's not over dramatize. I mean, at the end of the day. If people get excited about something, that's that's what you want, isn't it? Um, yeah. And then internally, then Jonathan, like, can you do you have any war stories? How do how has this this breaking down broken down internally at Paradox? I, I'd actually been free of war stories until this last city skylines expansion hadn't been too bad, but uh, this was the last expansion where I was a community developer, and I think this game leaked in every possible way. Uh, leak could go out. And it was all kind of a ironic mess, but uh, it started first, I think, with uh, people looking at Steam, you know, backend files, and they saw the code name Donut, so then they they got some ideas of what that might be about uh, from that, and then from there we ended up having the storefronts that went live a little too early, and then we ended up. This is the one that scared me the most: is our influencer or press beta. We're not sure which one actually uh, got in the hands of some one-man journalist who had his own blog, and he went on a, on a crusade to kind of uh, get this uh, news about Sunset Harbor out to everybody. And uh, we, we immediately reached out. We tried to figure out where this leak originated because that's, that's kind of a sinking feeling for me is maybe one of these influencers might have broken trust here. But it, by the end of the day, we realized that uh, I was talking with Nicholas, the producer. We realized that we actually hadn't updated those codes since the launch of the game five years ago. And in five years, that code had probably spread to a lot of people unintentionally. So we counted ourselves fairly lucky that this was the first time we had an incident like that and immediately changed the codes. So these things obviously were a bit of a shock for us. Um, I think we had a tendency to maybe over-dramatize it a little bit. But uh, overall, we ended up just, like I mentioned before, rolling with it. We adjusted some of our plans if need be, and things turned out all right. Uh, Colossal Order, as far as I heard, wasn't, you know, they didn't just go into shambles because of that news. We just kept moving forward. Uh, There's really nothing more to do with a leak than just to learn and do better next time. Yeah, and kind of to your point, Jonathan, Sunset Harbor is is currently one of our best-selling cities expansions of all time. So obviously, the bottom line wasn't really wasn't really you know disastrously damaged by this anyway. I think I can add I can add a couple of stories to this. Uh, I mean, to be to be honest, most of our big games have in some shape or form leaked uh, ahead of ahead of announcement. I would say Stellaris, the Stellaris product page on Steam, famously went live before the game uh, before the game was announced. So that was a that was a that was a hoot. I think you were with Paradox at that time, Shams. I wasn't here then, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. I mean, it, it was. It was disappointing. It was disappointing because it was the biggest announcement from PDS in such a long while, and you know, so we were supposed to stand up on stage at Gamescom and announce this, and everyone in the audience knew exactly what we're going <laughs> to. Bloodlines Two famously uh, leaked. Uh, I think an hour before we formally announced it, right in the middle of the, uh, you know, when when the the tender alternate reality uh, game was kind of reaching its uh, its conclusion. So uh, Bloodlines Two leaked through uh, through a distributor that uh, that accidentally put some assets live. Looking at you, GOG. <laughs> but I think these these things kind of happen, and and as we all talk about, it's. It's obviously it's demoralizing and it, it means we lose a lot of control and it, it it can be damaging because it takes away a lot of the the power in 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 the in, in, in actually being you know bringing new information to the market but things tend to sort of turn out turn out well at the end yeah can I ask a question for you both how do we decide uh, what's shared internally we're a bigger company now how much like internal com- compartmentalization do we have nowadays in, in terms of these uh, pieces of news or however you want to call it yeah so i think this also goes back to something we've talked about a lot before we we uh, at paradox we value um we value transparency very very highly typically we tend to be very generous with the information we share internally 
um, you know, if you're interested, anyone who works for Paradox can find out what is being worked on in various parts of the of the company. Uh, so there's a lot of trust placed in the in the in the um, in the individual. But that said, there are sort of certain procedures in place. Um, so again, this has been talked about before, but part of regular business for us is to start things and cancel things when they don't work out. We start a lot of game pro pro projects that never sort of reach the light of day, as it were. So we typically don't talk widely about projects that are started. And we typically don't share a lot of information internally about projects until they've reached uh, what we call the alpha key gates, which is really the point in time where we we kind of approve that the game is ready enough to actually be announced externally, right? Um, so by the time games are announced, or by the time we're getting close to announcing a game, they they become much more 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 widely widely known uh, internally as well. But but I'd say it's it's less about key, you know deliberately keeping information from people. Uh, it's more about what information do you actually need to know your to, to you know what 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 information do you need to know to be able to do your job properly so again if you ask you can probably get the answer but really does the uh, you know does the bloodlines 2 team need to know the details about every expansion we have in this pipeline for city skylines probably not so we might not you know there might not be a proactive effort to to keep them informed on that i don't know jonathan do you want to talk a little bit about the external side of this yeah, I'm just realizing as you talk, but we probably have had an advantage because there aren't a lot of story spoilers in our historical grand strategies. Mm. I mean, it's not going to surprise a lot of people to find out that France kicked England off the mainland. So <laughs> we do have one advantage there. But on the external side, when, as you brought it before, we have this, uh, this transparency and this trust that we build up, uh, even outside our company as well. It really drives our external partners as well because they might be given a lot of uh, confidential information uh, when it's needed, though. I think the key for us working on the external side is that the less people who know a secret, the generally better it's going to be kept. So we, we, we have a lot of partners that understand that we might not share stuff with them until we might publicly announce it, but uh, they're pretty understanding of that because we try to work with trusted professional individuals. Mm. And I think that's this is something might be worth emphasizing a little bit. We've again we've talked about it in the podcast before, but a culture of trust and transparency is very very important for us at Paradox. We tend to be very very lenient with information uh, uh, towards our staff, uh, and we place a lot of trust in the individual to you know keep secrets. If you're working on a highly anticipated game that hasn't been announced yet, we don't feel like we need to tell you that you. We don't feel like we need to have you sign papers, you know forbidding you to talk about this publicly. We kind of just trust your common sense and we trust in you as an adult and, a, and as a grown up to sort of keep this information to yourself. And I think th this, this philosophy has worked quite well for us. We've had very few instances of paradox staff actually leaking damaging information about our games. We, we, you know, we're all in the same boat. We're all in this together and we all want to see our games successful. So we think it's important to be able to trust each other to keep you know keep the secrets that need to be kept but... i can add to that as well and just like what julian said i think this this that this culture bit actually i think transcends our company and and at least exists i know for sure in the swedish games industry like we know what mm. fat shark and dice are working on but uh, we make sure that uh, you know there's a little bit of loose lips sink ships uh, mentality. We know that there's nothing to gain mm -hmm. as an industry by leaking all kinds of information. So we try to keep that culture aspect uh, in the loop as well. But how 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 are NDAs and secrecy handled with spouses and partners like at, at home? Mm -hmm. That's a very specific question. How I don't know how that's dealt with. My wife doesn't have an NDA with us. Yeah, so neither does mine. I think I think part of that is just. Uh, you know, my kids are too small to understand how big of a deal it is when I talk about, you know, our new vampire game. They just don't understand. <laughs> and my uh, my wife and my parents, they don't really care about video games. I mean, my father would happily go on Reddit to leak information about the, I don't know, the uh, Alfa Romeo roadmap for 2023, right? He would be super excited about that. But the Paradox Interactive roadmap, he couldn't give a shit about that. So... It, it kind of just helps that people tend to be either very invested in games or not invested at all, right? But yeah, so no, the, the answer is we typically do not force spouses and family to sign NDAs. We, we do not do that at Paradox. <laughs> okay, good. 
So it sounds like there's uh, uh, there won't be major consequences for them leaking either. What about internally at Paradox? What happens if somebody accidentally and I've you know I've done I've done it and I'm still here. So um, what are the consequences or are there penalties for accidentally leaking something at Paradox? What happens? I mean, not not really. I mean, we've obviously you know the few instances that I know about where someone has has accidentally revealed a feature or a, a piece of content that is going out ahead of time. There's not a tribunal of like elders. Who... No, exactly. Typically, what happens is that someone from my organization, so someone from PR or, or community management, sort of shows up and looks very disappointed and, <laughs> and kind of looks very stressed out, and and you know everyone just realizes that that was probably a that was probably a stupid thing to do. There's very there's very I've never really seen this stuff happening with ill intent, as it were. It's just honest mistakes. You know, people are excited about the stuff they work work on, so. A slip of the tongue on the forum or a slip of the tongue on Reddit can very easily happen. So it's not really it's not not really grounds for uh, you know dismissal or or penalties as such. It's more like that was a mistake, but we all understand that. So let's let's do better next time, right? I actually actually have a story of when I did this and was uh, told to. Uh, if you go to my Twitter page and, and it's a good time to follow me on Twitter. If you go to my p Twitter page, you see I have a header header image. Mm. And it's it's a uh, it's something from um, from Stellaris, and I used it for like two weeks on my header page, and then somebody from the marketing team got in touch and was like, "You can't use assets we haven't revealed yet. That's for the next <laughs> expansion." And they're like, uh, and I felt really bad, but it turned out I just Googled it and yeah. found it on you know, Google <laughs> Images. I had no idea how it ended up there. So there you go. I still. Yeah. Yeah. It's not always a finely tuned machine, right? Let's talk a little bit about externals, right? Uh, Jonathan, this is very interesting to get your your perspective on. How do how do you? I mean, this is what you spend a lot of your time doing, right? De dealing with talking to and 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 planning stuff out with external uh, YouTubers and streamers. What do we do if if someone leaks something? What happens in practice? How do we mitigate this? Well, first off, uh, we always do start with NDAs. For for us uh, working externally starts with the NDA to make sure that there's a weight to this agreement, that people understand that what we're talking about is confidential. I've gotten into the habit of, I literally type in brackets and bold in emails or Discord, this is confidential. Just every single time I talk about something that is. And those reminders help a lot too. But it's really gone back to that same culture that Paradox has built up. It's all about trust. We, we could enforce these NDAs if something really went bad, but geez, at that point, you've already made a dozen mistakes. The key to, that we're going to be working with with influencers is finding those that are trusted. And that includes some vetting and starting off slowly. I'm not going to instantly reveal, you know, a, a unannounced game to an influencer that I've never worked with before. We're going to start with maybe a free weekend or we're going to start with an expansion and we're going to build up these relationships other. I think you hit some on something that was very important, Daniel, earlier when you said we're all in this boat together. And that I think is a key strategy for working with external partners too. If we have people that feel vested in a project, they want the surprise, you know, to drop because they're part of the surprise. I think you got a lot less chance of them leaking their own activities out. So that works pretty well. In terms of uh, when a leak does happen, it's almost always just a mistake and usually not that big of an issue. We obviously talked to them and if it was something that repeatedly happened, maybe we'd move a little further, but uh, generally doesn't get to that point and uh, we've done a pretty good job thus far. I do know that Imperator had some issues there. I know that- Yeah, yeah can you talk a little bit about that? Like, yes, I, you're absolutely right. Like most of the times the stuff is by by accident, but what what, what happens then when things leak when there's kind of ill intent, right? How how has our relationship with a certain YouTuber or streamer changed if you know a certain high visibility embargo has been breached, like it like it was around Imperator? Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean it's always a, a topic, kind of a taboo topic, because nobody wants to admit that there is a blacklist out there, but uh, there is. We do keep track of influencers that we've had difficulty with. Um, especially if it was an intentional uh, breach of those uh, confidential NDAs. So it's something that we just have to learn by. We're not you know, sending out legal teams or bruisers to you know, rough people up, but we learn and we move on. That, that Imperator case was kind of an interesting one because uh, 
at TwitchCon last year, I talked to some other people in the game industry, and a lot of them were like, yeah, we've had similar issues with that influencer. Maybe you should have asked us first. And the lesson learned for me is to uh, talk more with our partners in the game industry, because usually an influencer who does cause trouble or has shown that there's been issues, and I'm not naming any individuals from that imperator campaign, but usually there's a history of that happening. So we learn from it and move on. And we're always willing to give uh, to give people other chances when we see that they change and that they're going to be more trustworthy. So a blacklist is never a, a permanent thing, never want to talk to you again. And we try to work with any individual and respect them as much as we can. Mm. Jonathan, Jonathan's famous blacklist, right? That's, uh, that's a document <laughs> that, that would be that would be cool to see at some point. I've not actually seen that that list. It's so very short, very <laughs> very. <laughs> All right, that sounds. I think that sounds fair enough. I think we're going to try to wrap it up uh, there. I think uh, to to maybe summarize, leaks happen. It can be frustrating, but at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't have to be the end of the world. I think is that is that a fair summary of, of what we've been saying? I think so. Definitely. Lean into it. Good stuff. Lean into it. Exactly. That's the, that's the way we do it. it. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, thank you very much for, for coming on the podcast. Really interesting to hear your, your perspective on, on these things. Uh, as always, to those of you who are listening, thank you very much for, for spending some time with us. This podcast, as you know, is available on most podcast platforms out there. Uh, YouTube, Google, Apple platforms, of course, SoundCloud and Spotify. Do follow us on Twitter to check out Shams' uh, stolen Stellaris uh, header. Uh, you can find us both there. We're also on the Paradox forums if you want to talk to us directly. Take care, stay safe, play some video games. And remember, keep it secret. Keep it safe.